this, this is the bad thing about war. You know, it's not soldier against soldier. The civilians have to suffer. And man, do they suffer. You know, little kids, you know, it just tears you up. We never talked about it. I wondered if we'd killed some kitties today or anything. We never mentioned that. No. In a battlefield, you'd run across a farm, you'd see the farmer there farming. You know, you try not to kill them while you're trying to kill Germans. Uh, they did their utmost. I guess they had no choice. It was either keep, keep, keep on with their, with their hard scrabble living or starve to death. The art of the gunner is to deliver a shell on a target at the right time. And uh, Harrington gave me the fire orders to put the first shell that was ever fired into a Canadian shell that was ever fired into Ortona. See, in the main streets of Ortona was all plugged up with uh, buildings the Germans had blown up into the street so you could not go down the street. And that's where we learned the system of uh, mouse holding. We'd blow a hole in the beginning of a block of houses and then they would go in and blow out the next wall. And you, you took your time, you didn't rush right in. You watched for every movement, every sound or something like that. And you see uh, uh, footprints in the dust and that or whatever, you know, something uh, that's just to uh, make you alert, eh? But, uh, but you learned that on your own. And uh, if we, as we went along, we just threw grenades down the stairs into the second floor and just kept on going. We'd get new reinforcements up in an hour, they'd be either wounded or killed. And you keep going on, your, your chances are less and less every every minute. His brother was killed in Ortona and he attended the uh, the burial, the temporary burial, and I was there too. And it was the saddest thing in the world to see a soldier laying his brother to rest. And I can remember sitting on top of my tank and it was so peaceful and all of a sudden I heard Christmas carols all sung in German. It was Christmas Day. All we got is one can of Irish stew in a can thrown to us. Here you are, that's your Christmas dinner because we're up in the front line, see. And uh, we were the last ones to come in for Christmas dinner. So we arrived back at the church about six o'clock at night. I can vaguely remember seeing these tables set with a couple of bottles of beer on them and candles going and the the organ playing at the back end with the Padre and uh, Wilf Gildersleeve. And uh, so they joined in with singing and it was uh, very unusual, extraordinary Christmas that uh, none of us will ever forget. In fact, I knew a couple of them went into that dinner. Old friends of mine walked out of the garden, got hit right in the baseball. And they're still there. Uh. German soldier come out and I had to shoot him on Christmas Day. That bothers me so much. I mean, I, you know, I don't mind, didn't mind shooting a German, but on Christmas Day it just didn't seem to be right. And we tried to take that silly monastery. Walls nine feet thick, you know. Couldn't blow it to pieces and you couldn't hurt anybody that was inside. And they had all the view that they needed, they had all the situation, they could control everything. To dislodge the Germans from Monte Cassino required constant daylight bombing. We provided top cover for them, seeing them going in and seeing the absolute indescribable devastation of the bombs on Monte Cassino. And uh, all the guns opened up and started shelling. And then it all quietened down after a while. They still couldn't take it. The Germans were still there after all that pounding, you know. We flattened the village. Uh, Casino was a little town uh, right down at the base of the of the mountain. When the infantry went over, the uh, and and the tanks went in, the the, the village was obliterated so much and there was so much debris they couldn't get through. And here the Germans come out and you know, anyway, we lost the battle. 
But in the meantime, our tanks were there, and the other tanks were, the German tanks were firing, and the fog was starting to lift. And our tanks took one hell of a beating there. Five minutes after 11, all the guns in our, our group opened up, which was 1,500 plus guns, fired simultaneously all at one shot. It lit up the sky. Our smoke shells were uh, intended to blind them to the advance of the Poles. And presumably we did reasonably well because the Poles got there, enough of them, to take the place. They were very brave. Must be terrible for Mother Zoe, waiting for the sons to come home. He wasn't praying to, uh, they lived to the ripe old age of 60 or 70. He was praying that he'd live to see another day. There's not a day, not a day that goes by that something doesn't cross your mind about what happened. Not a day. Your relationship is cemented together so good, they're just like, it's your family. You think more of them than you do your people back home. That's how it was. These were the salt of the earth. These were real good guys. Not macho, not most of them, not showing off. They just did their job no matter what. They were good at it. And I think Canada's contribution was magnificent, really.